The old man sighed deeply. I said like this every single week, Alex. He just looked down, not knowing what to say. Very well. What is the damage this week? Four. I'm sorry, he said, almost crying. It's worse than last week, he sighed again. I'm sorry, his voice started to crack under the strain of trying not to cry. Just give me your hands, child, the old man said in his disappointed voice. Alex wished the old man wouldn't call him that. He was an adult, and calling him that made it sound almost as if the old man cared about him. It was hard work writing the report with his hands in the state they were in, but he knew that not doing it would only be further trouble. Now it was his turn to sigh. All right, this week's offenses have been dealt with. He went over the list in his head, having the light on past bedtime, accidentally playing music too loudly, flirting with a scullery maid, sneaking an extra piece of bread during supper. Alex wondered if the so-called father was as strict with everyone in the community, or whether he hated him more because of the fact that he was the result of adultery. It was impossible to get away every week with absolutely zero wrongdoings. He wondered if there was a way to bribe the others to keep out of trouble. The next morning, he was back in the kitchen, making eyes at the scullery maid again. She was hesitant until being sure that no one was there. He assumed that she also got into trouble the last time, though he doubted it was the same amount of trouble. On his way out, he felt the hairs rise on the back of his neck. Without turning his head, he already knew the old man was right there. He put down his tray of food, full well knowing that he would be denied breakfast as punishment anyway. So you've chosen to get into trouble again already. He didn't respond. Clearly, our only choice is to send you away from here. It's all been arranged. You will be working with a farmer on the outskirts of town until next winter. I can't, unless you want your arms to look the same as your hands, I suggest you pipe down. You're leaving first thing in the morning. Until then, you are to stay in your room. But my chores are being taken care of. Don't you worry. Now, to your room. Yes, father. Thank you. He held his head down until he was in a small, cool room. Ever since childhood, the old man terrified him. Everyone else clearly felt the same, though the older members called it respect. It wasn't respect. Respect and fear, Alex knew, even having grown up in the confines of the walled community, were not the same thing. He only knew because of the one person he had respected in his life, his half-brother. They'd been separated when he left for the outside world, and never came back. Alex knew that the outside world was forbidden, although occasionally people were sent there to work on farms, get supplies that couldn't be made inside the community, usually medicine or tools. Never talk to anyone from the outside world, Alex, he heard the old man say. He was young when this lesson was drilled into him, but already knew from experience that asking why he shouldn't do something only led to more trouble, and never got him an actual answer. The general consensus was that if you weren't sure if you were allowed to do something, you shouldn't do it. If something was said to be wrong, you should just believe it. He lay in bed that night, colder than usual, and tired from hunger. He was unsure whether the feeling of nausea was also the hunger, or just that familiar pang that he'd felt since early puberty, that horrid feeling of having to suppress all urges and desires that becomes nausea in the evenings and early mornings. He'd felt it surging again when talking to the scullery maid. He didn't know her name, but he knew she'd been in the community since early childhood, though she wasn't born there like he was. The next morning, the old man came to wake Alex up himself, after a quick, lukewarm shower, he was escorted outside. I'm sure I don't have to tell you this, but you must refrain from speaking to anyone at all. They know you are here to work, and what you should be doing. There is no talking necessary, understand? 
Yes, father. Good. The farm is just what you need to forget about Krista. What? You're going there to get your mind off the scullery maid, the old man said hurriedly. So keep focused on your work. Krista. Her name was Krista. He almost permitted himself to smile. But not in front of the old man. No. He would do it on the back of the truck, on his way to the farm. Yes, his only truly alone time. Even the cold room had cameras. Everywhere had eyes, ears. This was his only time alone, and the thought almost made him happy. The farm was isolated. He had expected there to be some more people, but apparently not. What few people there were had already been put to work by the time he got there. All the excitement and joy from being alone and peace on the ride there vanished in an instant, as he was introduced to Gary, the young man who would be instructing him on his work. We'll get along just fine, you and I, Gary said to him, holding out a hand. He half hid behind the man who had driven the truck to drop him off. He doesn't really talk, the man said. All right, Gary shrugged. The man left after making sure that everything was arranged. Alex went to work swiftly, listening carefully to Gary's instructions. Any questions he had, he deliberately forgot about. He still felt tired and nauseous from the previous day. There had been no breakfast this morning either. He had felt lost in his work, and it took all of his mental effort to keep strong and focus on the task at hand, when suddenly he heard a loud noise. He jumped and almost screamed, having no idea what was going on. Lunch break, he heard someone yell. Gary tapped him on the shoulder, and he jumped a second time. Relax, partner. It's just the bell saying that we can take a break. You've been doing some good work. Alex frowned at him, saying nothing. I understand you don't talk much, but you can shake a man's hand at least, can't you? Still frowning, Alex took the hand in front of him in his own. He was unfamiliar with the gesture, but hoped that it would be harmless. In another moment, he let out a soft cry of pain. Gary had squeezed his injured hand. Not very hard, but hard enough to hurt and surprise Alex. Whoa, sorry, man. Are you all right? I didn't think it was that hard. Alex looked down at his hand, still saying nothing. Gary had been smiling at him until now, as though he'd never been unhappy in his life. But now he was also frowning and looked serious. Alex panicked. Am, am I going to get in trouble for this? He asked anxiously. Trouble for what? He realized what he'd done, decided to say nothing further. Gary sighed and took his arm. We'll talk about it later. Lunch isn't very long. Come on, Miss Kathy made her famous pot pie today. You're going to love it. Miss Kathy, a tall, round woman with her hair in a bun, insisted on Alex having seconds. He stayed until everyone had left to thank her while they were gone, hoping she wouldn't rat him out. She seemed too nice for that. The pot pie was the best food he'd had in his life, and he told her that. She told him he was silly and sent him back out with an orange and a bottle of water. He hadn't realized how thirsty he was until he took a sip, and then almost downed everything in one gulp. He felt like he could keep working until midnight. When the bell rang again, Everyone started finishing up for the day. Alex kept working, assuming that the same man would come pick him up. Hey there, he heard Gary's voice. He nodded in Gary's direction, but kept his eyes to the ground. I'm sorry about earlier. I didn't mean to freak you out. He shook his head and waved his hand, as if to say, don't worry about it. Look, I need to ask you something, okay? You don't need to say anything if you don't want to. He said seriously. Alex felt nervous tension throughout his whole body. Can I see your hands? He asked. Alex's eyes went wide. I won't hurt you again, I promise. That was an accident. He considered. Gary hadn't done anything to make him think that he was unsafe here. But still. He shook his head again. Please, I'm worried about you, he said. 
Alec shook his head more violently. Legarry took hold of his arm and pulled it towards him. Alex's hands had been wrapped up in bandages, but after a long day's work, they were covered in dirt and coming loose. Gary gasped when he saw the bruises and what appeared to be cuts on his hands. What happened? he asked, letting go of Alex's arm now. A work accident. Jeez, how did that happen? Just then, the driver appeared. He was wearing sunglasses, a dark suit and tie. But Alex recognized him. It's a long story. I have to go, Alex said, rushing to the man's side. Wait, he screamed. But Alex was gone already. That night, Alex went to wash off the day's hard work in the shower and winced at the pain as his hands made contact with the water. And then the agony of having to wash his face. He kept hearing the old man's screams over and over. How he wasn't supposed to talk to anyone, what a disgrace he was, everything in the book. It had been a long time since he'd paid with his face, not since he had attempted to kiss Krista when he was much younger. Every week was a different body part depending on what his crimes were. Hands if he stole, back if he slept too late, face if he talked too much. He remembered one week during his teen years where everything hurt and for much longer than usual. It had been a full two weeks since the farm. The previous week, Alex had managed to commit no sins for the first time in his life, but found himself still punished, the reason being that the old man hadn't forgiven him for speaking to Gary. During his last punishment, something had snapped in his mind and body, and he knew that nothing would ever really be the same again. It was as though the fear of the old man had vanished and been replaced by something else, something Alex couldn't quite place. He talked to me. He was asking questions, Alex began. But the old man's screaming rang through the halls to stop him. The driver had seen him talking to Gary. It was all over the minute they got back. What about Krista? Alex asked. What? The scullery mate. The whole reason I was sent away was to keep my mind off her, wasn't it? Insolence, the old man screamed. He wouldn't be sent to the farm again. Clearly, he couldn't be trusted to perform a simple task, such as just staying quiet in the outside world. From that day on, he'd had his own full-time security camera, in the form of a grown man following him. It wasn't the driver. The driver was too busy. Alex did chores with a man watching his every move. He thought again about whether it might be possible to bribe anyone, in any way. He stared intently at this man, wondering what it could possibly be that it could give him. He could offer extra food to him. That was all he had in the world. Just the clothes on his back and the food on his plate that tasted like nothing. Alex sighed, without realizing at first that the man would be able to hear. Hey, I'm not happy with this arrangement either, all right? The old man said, snappishly. I'm sorry, he said, looking down again. They got me babysitting some damn kid. What am I, a mother? I'm not a kid, Alex said without thinking. Sure as I'll act like one. Look like one, too. How old are you? Fourteen? Fifteen? I'm almost nineteen, Alex said, annoyed now. Oh, what do you need me for, then? Alex explained how he was always in trouble for every little thing. The man understood long before he was finished, and for a while said nothing. What would you do if I wasn't here? He asked Alex. Probably go to find Krista, he admitted. You really like that girl, don't you? Yeah. What would you do if you didn't have to babysit me? Look, I'm going to cut you a deal, all right? And if you tell the father about this, you're dead. I won't. I promise. I've been ratted out too many times to ever do that to anyone else. Good. Now listen here. Alex did exactly as the man had instructed. There weren't a lot of places inside the walls where it could be alone, and normally it was impossible anyway because there was some random person around every corner, pretty much waiting for him to make a mistake of any kind. But since he was accounted for with the man, no one was on the lookout for him. He managed to make his way to a secluded area where Krista was waiting for him. 
when you've been there almost too long, the man sent a signal, and he hastily got up his things and left. I felt that nauseous feeling rise again, but it dissipated almost immediately. The pain in his hands vanished and was replaced by a pleasant and indescribable feeling of ecstasy. Back in the hallway, the man walked in front of him, leading the way, instead of behind him to watch his every move like usually. It was clear that he trusted him now more than anyone, save perhaps for Krista, had ever trusted him. He led Alex towards his own room, which was warmer and larger, but very dark. There are no cameras in here. You should be safe. Thanks, and thanks for, you know, his voice trailed off. We had a deal. I needed a break and you needed that girl. But you remember what we agreed on. Yes, Alex said, although the concept was still alien to him. He had no prejudice against the man and thought it was strange he should request this, but agreed nonetheless. Whatever ends up happening with Krista, the same happens here with me later, when I come get you, he said. The man beckoned for him to come closer. Alex hadn't known it, but Gary had, at some point during his absence from the farm, come looking for him. Being told that he wasn't allowed to see him, Gary had felt suspicious of the community and kept a close eye on everyone as he was treated to a tour of the main buildings. The father himself explained how they functioned like a well-oiled machine. Alex will be turning 20 soon. At that age, he is considered an adult and will be given a wife. Given? Gary asked, shocked. We have arranged marriages. They worked well. I see, is all Gary said, though he thought it sounded less arranged and more forced. He had only meant to follow up on the kid. He was sure Alex was a kid and not the age the man said he was. But hearing the way the man talked and seeing everyone inside immediately avert their eyes at seeing an outsider, he made up his mind that something more drastic would have to be done. Alex woke up next to the man. He had never slept next to anyone and found the idea of waking up this way only comforting. For the first time, he lay awake not knowing whether he should sneak out and go back to his own room or wait for the man to wake up and tell him what to do. He didn't have to wait long. Morning, the man half yawned. Morning, Alex responded. You all right? You seem pale this morning. I'm just not sure what to do now. I'll be expected to babysit you for some time still. Not sure if that will ever change. You'll have to get ready for the day in your room and then do your chores, he told Alex. I see. Can I see Krista again? I can arrange that, but then our deal is still the same. Alex was suddenly flooded with memories of the previous night. Not so much events as feelings. He remembered feeling that same ecstasy flowing where the pain in his hands and face used to be. He reached out to the man. I'm sorry. We don't have time now. It's almost time for you to start for the day, but we'll make it up later. For the first time in his life, Alex felt arms around him. He was unsure what to do, but instinctively wrapped his own arms around the man's back, and they held each other closely until he had to leave. He grabbed his things and made his way to his own room, not running but walking fast. Running would attract too much attention. When Alex got out of his room, Dressed and cleaned and ready to work, the man was nowhere to be found. He searched at the man's room, but it was empty. A nauseating panic crawled down his spine as he thought about Krista and ran to find her. His mind raced as he thought about any conceivable way that this could have happened. Did someone see him, after all? Did the man get in trouble for allowing the two of them to be alone? There's no way that the man would have ratted him out. Even if he had... The father would certainly have sent someone to still watch over him. There's no way he would just let him be alone altogether. He slowed down. Something wasn't right. There seemed to be no one around in the halls. Even the few people who were around in the various rooms seemed like they weren't really there. He 
They all avoided looking at him, deliberately blending into the background. He had always felt like he couldn't possibly be alone, not with so many people around and constantly watching him. But at the same time, he would felt helplessly alone and unable to reach out to anybody, no matter how close or how ever-present. He never spoke to anyone except Krista. Suddenly, the man's last words rung in his mind. Michael. My name is Michael. The father didn't tell me yours. Alex, he had replied. It didn't occur to him until that moment, but names were powerful things. He didn't know Krista's name until after the father had let it slip by accident, even though he had known her all his life, and had no idea what anyone else in the community was called, not even the father himself. He walked now, though still hurrying, towards Krista's workplace. She always got up very early. It would be high time for her to be busy already. She wasn't there. Then he remembered the cameras. The man's room had no cameras, but someone must have noticed his own absence from his usual room and told the father. He sunk to the floor as a feeling of nausea and desperate need washed over him. He wished for the previous day with Krista, for the old man's arms around him, for that feeling of pain to turn back into ecstasy in his hands and face. He didn't do his chores that day. He felt sure that eventually someone would come for him, scold him, take him to the father. He felt so sure that Michael would be replaced by another babysitter, someone who wouldn't strike bargains. But no one came. That evening he sat in the food hall, the plate in front of him untouched. He hadn't eaten all day, but felt too sick for any food, except maybe Miss Kathy's pot pie. He sighed deeply and went to his old, cold room to wash off the sweat of the day and try to sleep. But sleep did not come easy. He suddenly found that he could no longer sleep without someone at his side, without any of the things he had gotten used to so quickly the previous day. He was unsure whether feeling constantly watched was better or worse than feeling this way, like there was not a single soul in the world but him. He wished desperately for anyone to show up, anything to happen, as long as people were involved. His dreams were uneasy, seemed feverish. Yes, he thought he was coming down with a fever. His whole body burned with aching need, and he felt sweaty and nauseous again. The pain in his hands was more intense now, almost worse than it ever was. His chest hurt, his head hurt. His mind seemed simultaneously empty and filled with thoughts of Krista and Michael. Suddenly, unsurprisingly, he wished to speak with the father for the first time in his life. That morning, after another cold shower, he ran to the father's office. He knocked, despite the pain in his hands, and was told to enter. He did, and the father looked up from his desk. As soon as he'd seen Alex, he looked back down. Father, I... The father coughed loudly. It's the day of the week that I confess to you, he said. The father said nothing, still not looking up. Three, Alex said, waiting and wishing that the father would say something, anything. In his mind, he could picture the father walking towards him. That same grim look on his face that he always had when talking to Alex about his weekly sins. But he remained seated at his desk, unmoving, silent. Alex fell to the floor and wept, hands at his face. His face burnt, his hands ached, his whole body felt empty and weak. He didn't remember how or when he made it back to his room. He only knew that by the time he had, it was evening again. In spite of having not eaten the whole day, he knew that the nausea was for other reasons. He felt sick from his head to his toes with fever and desire. He so desperately needed any kind of feeling to happen, even the punishment he was due. Yes, he thought. He could go for that. He felt he wanted it. No, he felt he needed it. 
tears welled up in his eyes again. Oh God, he began. Please send Michael, Krista, anyone to give me pain. Even the father. Anyone, God. Anyone. He had never prayed before and had been told his whole life that there was no God. But in this horrible night, he could not for the life of him think of what else to do. Then it came to him as though his prayer had been answered immediately. He smiled through the tears, the grim is still on his face. Thank you, God. Amen. He finished. The father had hoped that the boy from the farm would not return. It had been more than a week since his last visit, but something in his demeanor made it clear that it wasn't all over yet. He was sitting in his study, just about to get up and take a break from his endless writing, when the door burst open. How dare you! This is a sanction! He was interrupted by a police officer pinning him to his desk. Sir, you have the right to remain silent. We are under warrant to search your premises, another one told him. Unhand me, was all he could manage. From the corner of his eye, he saw Gary and cursed him a thousand times under his breath as the cops went about their business. It was a long time before they found Alex. The buildings were huge and mostly empty, but they had to inspect every room to be sure. They had split into two groups to make the process quicker. Jack, I see something, one of the officers called out to their colleague. Is it the kid? Let's find out. He broke down the door, though it was easy enough to see in through it. There had been practically no privacy in this particular hallway. Jesus Christ, Jack exhaled and called for Gary's group to come in on the walkie-talkie. Is he here? Gary asked, out of breath, having evidently ran down the hall to meet them there. Yeah, but he ran in without thinking or listening, and within seconds, the officers heard him screaming. Inside, Alex was lying with his back against the wall, covered in blood. He wasn't moving. Gary was sure he was dead, started to cry, then jumped when he felt a cold hand on his shoulder. Gary, is that you? The weak voice asked him. It's me. God, you're alive. Hey, Jack, he's alive in here. Get a medic. On it, Jack yelled and pulled out a cell phone. What happened? Who did this to you? Nothing. No one. Don't lie to me, damn it. I swear. I'm sorry I lied to you before, but this time is different. Nobody did this to me. I did. Why the hell would you do this to yourself? I needed... I needed it, Gary, he said. What? The father. He wouldn't. I didn't know how to live without it anymore, Alex said, and suddenly the world went black. He could vaguely hear voices in the background. His head was on something soft. He felt comfortable. He kept thanking God for sending someone to him so that he wouldn't be alone. He hoped Gary wouldn't also disappear. Thank you for watching and listening. If you are interested in the artwork displayed in this video, there is a link in the description below.